Hello, I will be talking about the control synthesis approach for expressive and controllable neural synthesis. Uh, this paper was written by me, Bob Sturm, and Carl Tomea at KDH and Epidemic Sound. Neural audio synthesis, as we've defined it, means generating instrument audio with neural networks. This means that we can learn to emulate instruments from data. One such example is AnSynth, which was trained to synthesize notes from MIDI input. Similarly to many sample-based instruments, it doesn't work well with the instruments with strong note-to-note -note timber dependencies, like the violin, for example. More recently, fast and flexible neural audio synthesis and differentiable digital signal processing used continuous pitch and loudness contours to condition their synthesis models. This continuous control means that we can now expressively emulate instruments, even if they have strong note-to-note -note timber dependencies. We can generate these pitch and loudness contours either by drawing them in by hand or by using an MP controller. But we can also extract these contours from instrument recordings. However, if the shape of these pitch and loudness contours that we extract are not similar to the shape of the pitch and loudness contours of the target instrument, we will not get a very faithful emulation. So imagine that we take the pitch and loudness contours from a piano, uh, we won't get a, a faithful saxophone emulation, uh, no matter how good that synthesis model is. Our paper asked the question, can we find a convenient way to control these synthesis models? More specifically, can we generate uh, control signals for the synthesis models from low resolution user input? More concretely, can we transform MIDI into expressive pitch and loudness contours? So um, our approach uses a control model in order to transform user input into a set of features which the synthesis model then uses to synthesize audio. Some related work has been done in this area uh, prior to deep learning and neural audio synthesis becoming popular. Um, these systems uh, adopt a performance instrument view of the synthesis problem. Um, this implies that the performance model models the performance and the instrument model models the instrument. Uh, the problem is that this boundary is not always clear. For example, um, if we think of a drum recording, is the loudness contour of this drum recording, is it a function of the performance or is it a function of the instrument? And the answer is probably both. The control synthesis model doesn't care about this performance instrument boundary. Our control model uses a bi-directional LSTM to transform MIDI pitch and velocity into continuous pitch and loudness contours. The synthesis model, which comes directly from the DDSP library, then transforms these contours into audio. So listen to, let's listen to a short uh, example here. So here we synthesize this MIDI clip with uh, sine waves. Okay. And here we synthesize uh, the same MIDI clip with a trained control synthesis model, uh, trained on a violin data set. Um, the data sets we used were uh, chosen because they were uh, solo performances, monophonic, one performer, one instrument, one acoustic environment. We used one violin data set, uh, which was originally used in the DDSP paper, and we also uh, added a new flute, flute data set. Um, the synthesis models comes directly from the, uh, the DSP library. All we did was retrain it. If you want the model details for this, uh, for this synthesis model, you can uh, check the, the, the DSP paper um, or, or just the library. In order to, to, to train our uh, control model, we need to generate some input output pairs. So for each piece of audio, we use an audio to MIDI transcriber to extract MIDI pitch and velocity. And from the same audio, we extract loudness contours and pitch contours. In order to, to extract these, uh, this MIDI transcription, we use the very simple method and frankly, a very crude method, which um, starts out by just extracting pitch and pitch confidence with crep and loudness. We then detect note onsets and offsets by checking when the uh, pitch confidence crosses a manually set threshold denoted by this triangle symbol. 
if the pitch value uh, crosses a, a semitone boundary, then we consider it uh, an onset and an offset. Finally, we assign MIDI note numbers and velocities by um, first we find the note closest to, av to the average pitch during a note event. And for the velocity, we map it to the peak loudness during a note event. And when, then we transpose and scale the, velo the resulting velocity distribution to match uh, a reference MIDI dataset. And we use Ma Maestro in this case. Here is um, a diagram of our control model. So at, at its core is a, a BLSTM, and then there are some fancy uh, skip connections and some scaling stuff. Uh, probably very much uh, over-engineered, but it works. Uh, we can see this here. So here uh, are the um, input uh, MIDI uh, notes, uh, sorry, MIDI note numbers uh, in orange. The, the solid line, gray line, the solid gray line is the, um, pitch uh, target, the target pitch contour, sorry. And the, the dotted line is the uh, predicted pitch contour. We see that it follows, the, predict, the prediction follows the target quite closely. Here is the same thing, but for velocity and loudness. Um, so the orange boxes are the ve MIDI velocities and the uh, lines here are the prediction and target of the uh, loudness. We can see that it's not as close as for the pitch, um, but it does okay. Let's listen to some results of the, the full system. So first, here's an excerpt of the violin data set. And here is uh, the starting melody from Furelis by Beethoven, synthesized with a trained uh, control synthesis model. Same thing, but uh, for the flute data set. So you might have heard here in the beginning that uh, in the flute render, there are some interesting sounds before the first MIDI note event. We think that uh, this is due to the MIDI transcription being uh, insufficient. So the, the, there is essentially noise in, in the data set. Um, we also hear um, something that sounds a bit like a looping, uh, like, the, like a note is looping. In some examples, when we push the, the inputs into a space where, um, which is not represented in the in the training uh, in the in the training data set, we we can hear some strange and unrealistic timbers. So we can hear that these lower notes sound quite strange. On the other hand, these notes don't exist on a, on a real violin. 
we performed some some other experiments where we trained uh, a control model on uh, a data set A and a synthesis model on a data set B. Here we trained the control model on this uh, Irish fiddle data set. The synthesis model was trained on the uh, classical violin data set we heard earlier. And here is um, Thurilis synthesized with a control synthesis model trained in part on this Irish fiddle data set and uh, in part on this classical violin data set. We also um, extended the, this neural network um, with a manual or, or like hand-tuned vibrato function here, where we just applied a low frequency and a low amp uh, sine wave to the pitch contour. Let's listen to this. So here is without vibrato. And here is with vibrato. I should also mention that a similar thing was done in, in fast and flexible neural neural audio synthesis. Um, but but this shows that this works um, in the in within a control model as well. In conclusion, the controlled synthesis model is a viable approach for turning audio synthesis model into uh, controllable and expressive neural music synthesizers. Thank you, uh, and I guess I will now be accepting questions. <laughs>